Hello guys, uh, welcome to Koa Academy. Guys, this video is about the recap about a uh, recap about Karl Marx and all of his theories and ideas. So, stay with me for 20 minutes and you will be in a good position to discuss Karl Marx in a very very philosophical way. You will be able to understand all the theories he gave and where where he was wrong and where he was right. So, let's start. So, so the key points of today's uh, revision lecture would be uh, number one remember that Karl Marx was not a sociologist like Durkheim but a revolutionary who wanted to radically change society remember Durkheim uh, why I would say that Durkheim was a sociologist in its pure form because he studied he employed scientific method to study the society for example when he studied suicide he actually compared the suicide rates in different countries and then explained with statistical data as to why suicide rates in certain countries were higher and why suicide rate in certain countries were lower. So he, he actually talked in terms of numbers, whereas Karl Marx, you don't see any, any, anything in which Karl Marx talks in numbers. So sociology, as we, as we study, is all about, you know, employing scientific method, but Marx did not employ scientific method. So we would say that uh, a sociologist would say that Karl Marx was not a sociologist in his true sense, but of course he wrote extensively about society, about economy. Uh, so he, he was a revolutionary of sort who wanted to radically change society. So Karl Marx were not, was not an evolutionary. He wanted dramatic changes. So Marx's analytical approach to history and society. Remember, whenever different philosophers and historians study history, they employ a specific approach okay they, they employ a specific approach and what Marx, uh, what what approach Marx, uh, you know employed to study history was his approach of historical materialism so let's break down this term uh, historical materialism focuses upon material factors that is how labor and production are organized so uh, the word materialism suggests that historical that is when we are talking about history and how history changes Marx look look Marx looks at material factors that is labor land land production you know capitalists resources of production all these Marx believes that history changes over time just because of the changes in material factors that is who owns the materials of factors who owns the resources that that is that is basically the determinant or the primary factor rest revolves around it for example some some sociologists say that it's the ideas that makes the that make the history tick but marx says that ideas are secondary all the changes breed from how materialism how material factors are organized okay we'll see more, more about it later so marx believes that material factors are the real foundation or economic base of society which determines the superstructure so according to marx the society is composed of a base and a superstructure so the base which is the determinant is the material factors how material factor by material factor let's suppose in a capitalist society we mean the laborer the the factory owner the land owner these economic relationships constitute the base and rest of the things for example ideas for example religion culture and then different institutions like schooling and politics these are secondary in nature the economic factors determine what sort of religion will be in place in a particular society what sort of cultural norms would be there what sort of politics would be there in a society so for marx the primary uh, determinant in a society and the primary movers and shakers in history are uh, material factors so Marx says that the base is organized in two main ways number one by its technological level that is forces of production and number two by its social relationships remember we are talking about the base right now we are not talking about the superstructure which is more abstract in nature so the base Marx says is that is it's organized in two ways that is by its technological level that is factors of production for example in a modern capitalist system the let's suppose factors of production are factories whereas in the primitive societies there was no concept of factories rather rather people employed themselves in agriculture so plows or you know tractors those sort of things constituted their factors of production whereas what are social relationships it's it's the about the relations of production that is how 
the, the those people who work in a society how they they relate to each other for example in capitalist society the relationship is that of the uh, bourgeoisie and the proletariat that is the property owning class and the non property owning labor class similarly in ancient societies marx also talks about them the relationship was of the let's suppose feudal lords and the serfs so two things relations of production and the forces of production forces of production being the tangible things and how those forces of production are worked upon who who works on those forces of production that is land labor capital and what are the relationships among them that is called relations of production so the blend of these two factors constitutes a mode of production in a society and that mode of production determines the superstructure that is what will be the religion in a society who will who will control the institutions who will control religion who will control culture so relations of production are essentially the relations between social classes okay so labor class and capitalist class in a in the in a capitalist society these two classes are related in such a way that labor does not own any factors of production whereas capit capitalist class owns the factors of production so marx says that that class divisions are rooted in the way production is organized okay we say capitalist class we say labor class so the combination of the relations of production and the forces of production results in a mode of production in a society marx says that different societies through history had different modes of production modern industrial society marx says is based on the capitalist mode of production or capitalism so in capitalism since we we just said that uh, it's about uh, the mode of production is uh, you know about the classes so in capitalism one class the capitalist class owns all the productive assets the other class the working class owns only its labor power which it must sell to the capitalist class in exchange for wages so as we just saw that uh, relations of production are essentially the relations between the classes and in the modern capitalist society the the two classes are the capitalist class which owns all the productive asset and the other is the working class which owns its labor power so, marx says that since the labor has to sell its labor power in exchange for wages and he calls that it is an unfair exchange as the capitalists are able to exploit the workers and that is how they make a profit the the capitalist class for example the worker who is working in a factory he will be paid bare minimum wage whereas the the result the fruit of his labor the majority of the fruit of his labor in the form of the products being produced will be taken by the capitalist so the only way to end this exploitative relationship is for the workers to over is for the workers to overthrow capitalism and establish a classless society that is communism as we just discussed at the beginning of this lecture that marx was a revolutionary he was not in favor of evolution he did not believe that one day uh, capitalism will will take on a, a, a take on take on a, a a role of some welfare state no that's not what marx predicted he says that capitalism will keep uh, making the rich richer and poor poorer so he he said that the only way to end this exploitative relationship between the capitalist and the laborer was to overthrow this capitalist system so uh, this is how we will go about this lecture first we will talk about history of marx and marxism then we will talk about the influences on marx that is where from where marx marx borrowed his ideas then key concepts in marx's theory his aims what marx says about the human nature whether it's it's whether it's greedy whether it's whether it's not greedy and how it changes over time then we will talk about historical materialism that is how history changes and then class struggle marx is pet topic then we will talk about modes of production in detail then social revolution then capitalism communism and lastly we will evaluate and and do some criticism on marx's theory so history of marx and marxism karl marx um, he lived from 1818 to 1883 uh, and marx joins radical movement okay he but he was exiled from germany and he goes to paris and london and writes his main works friedrich engels was his friend and ironically he was a factory owner he was a socialist and scholar but marx lived on his generous bounties okay 
Marx Marx had not money, but his friend Engels had money. He was a factory owner, so he supported Marx financially. These both these guys are very important figures in the socialist literature. Okay, so important writings of Marx. Early on in his writing career, Marx wrote more about philosophy. His famous work in 1844 was Economic and Philosophic Manuscripts. In the middle of his writing career, he wrote more about politics. For example, the Communist Manifesto. He 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 wrote this Communist Manifesto manifesto jointly with uh, Engels. And in the later part of his career, he wrote more about economics, Das Kapital. Uh, or capital as you would call it in english he wrote it in 1867 so marx wrote extensively about philosophy politics and economics but over the years he changed from a philosopher into a politician of sorts and into an economist so influences marx was greatly influenced from german german philosophy hegel he borrowed his ideas of social change from hegel uh, so he believed that social change comes from social struggle and conflicts between different groups that is dialectics what is dialectics it means that social change occurs when they when two opposing ideas confront each other secondly the ge- second german influence on him was ludwig feuerbach he dealt with the real human world not just religious ideas about it okay so he was more about humanist sort of thing so he ludwig believes in abstract ideas uh he was also influenced from british political economy adam smith uh, who wrote extensively on the division of labor and his famous theory about market and in the form of invisible hand that that also influenced marx then marx borrowed his ideas from french socialism in the field of politics saint simon who said that one must create a new society based on cooperation between classes not conflict between them so marx believed that years after capitalism uh, the society uh, which will take its place will be one based on cooperation that is communes so the key concepts marx's aim was to create a form of knowledge which was critical of existing society marx wanted to create a body of knowledge a pool of knowledge which criticized the existing society uh laborers were living in, in in a false consciousness okay it was it was they were made to believe that working hard is a virtue and that their condition their deplorable condition is because capitalists were better off they had the private ownership of property but marx wanted to create a body of knowledge which was critical of existing society and which raised a class consciousness among the laborers he wanted to use theory to enable the working classes to understand the basis of their basis of their oppression and exploitation so according to marx the working class did not perceive that it was being exploited they just took it for granted that okay capitalist class do on the uh, forces of production and they they need to uh, earn better because they they are the haves and with the working class are the haves not marx said that no that's not the case working class do not have resources because the bourgeoisie or the capitalist class have expropriated their resources marx wanted to encourage a revolution that is to abolish the capitalist society altogether and lastly to point the way to a communist society marx believed that his writings would unite the workers of the world and ultimately they will overthrow the capitalist economy and a communist society would emerge in its place marx talks about human nature this is a very very important concept remember because based upon this concept his theory of alienation is based okay so marx believed that human being is fundamentally a social animal okay therefore human nature is socially malleable if 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 man is a social animal then it means that his nature is changeable it it's malleable it changes through history marx believed that human nature changes through history and it is shared by particular societies so the type of society which is in place determines how an individual will behave okay for example in human nature marx says that in capitalism the human nature is selfish whereas in the communist 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 society human nature is cooperative marx believed that the primitive societies were communi- communist in nature and back then human was cooperative he was not selfish like in the capitalist system where the where the where the capitalist is 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 a selfish profit maker 
सो मार्क्स मार्क्स फंडामेंटल प्रेमिस इज दैट ह्यूमन नेचर चेंजेस ओके ह्यूमन्स आर मार्क्स बिलीव दैट ह्यूमन्स आर फंडामेंटली क्रिएटिव बींग्स एंड दे एक्सप्रेस देयर क्रिएटिविटी थ्रू मेकिंग थिंग्स दैट इज इन द वर्क सो दे फाइंड अ सेटिस्फैक्शन ऑफ देयर क्रिएटिव क्रेविंग्स इन द वर्क दे डू क्रिएटिव वर्क इज हाउ ह्यूमन्स एक्सप्रेस दमसेल्व एज क्रिएटिंग क्रिएटिव बींग्स work is therefore at the heart of what it is to be human it is enjoyable so marx believes that being human means that you are a creative and work is therefore at the essential of being creative being human so work needs to be enjoyable in order to feel yourself as a human being okay but work is only enjoyable if people are allowed to work freely and creatively it's no longer enjoyable if people are forced to work okay and therefore for marx a good society is one which allows creativity and freedom in work and a bad society is one which forces people to work so that work is neither free nor creative marx definitely believed that in the modern industrial capitalist society where there is division of labor work is neither free nor creative so human beings cannot express their creativity and of course they feel alienated from the um, work the, from the objects they create from the uh, from the entire production process and from themselves and their fellow workers talking about historical materialism marx believes that anyone wishing to understand society must always regard the material aspects of society as the most important for marx material factors are the determining the ideal elements of a society are less important they are determined what do we mean by ideal elements means it means the the values the culture the social institutions like family politics religion marx says that these are determined by the material factors which are determining in nature for example the the capitalist class which owns the factors of production they decide what sort of religion is better marx famously says that religion is the opium of the poor so marx believes that the rich class the property owning class actually have created certain religious ethos which make the working class believe that being poor is is sort of is is part of the fate i mean they can't do anything about it but marx says that that is that the religious these religious beliefs are created these ideal elements or religious beliefs are created that is they are determined and what are the determining factors they are the material aspects which the property owning class owns okay so what are ideal aspects hegel emphasized the ideal factors in history remember earlier we we read that marx borrowed his his ideas from hegel also but hegel believed in ideas he believed that history moves as a result of the opposing forces of ideas and beliefs for example morality and religion which are abstract in nature and ways of thinking and overall culture marx rejected hegel's idealism marx believed that yes history moves forward when opposing forces clash but marx believed that it's not a because of ideal factors ideal factors are determining ideal factors are determined it's the more material factors which collide and then history moves and there is there is there is like revolution and history moves forward okay so he, marx even though believed in this dialectical dialectical process that history moves forward because of synthesis and antithesis but it's not the synthesis of ideas rather it's the synthesis of how production is organized okay so marx realized that it was necessary to concentrate on the material factors in history people that is people making things for example how which who which people work on the forces of production to make things people working laborers and people working on raw materials to make goods and humans transforming nature for their use so these are all the material factors that is how production is organized how how who are the people who work on who are the people who who work on the resources or factors of production then who who are the people who work on the raw materials to produce goods and who how humans transform nature for their use that is converting raw materials into goods so historical materialism marx believes that social change is produced by changes in material factors as opposed to hegel's idealism who believed that social change is produced by changes in ideas 
human history is driven by changes in how people work and make things once again we talked about base economic base and the superstructure marx believed that history is driven by changes in the base that is how people work and make things whereas hegel believed that history uh, changes because of the superstructure that is how because how ideas change that changes the history and that drives the change so materialism looks at material factors in society and is emphasizes the production and labor over ideal factors and historical means that we look at changes over time in material factors so that is where how the term historical materialism comes into being class and class struggle marx's pet topic okay two basic types of society classless society that is communism and class based society that is capitalism marx believed marx lived in the time of class based society that is he lived in a capitalist society and he believed that after revolution a classless society would emerge called a communist society within class based societies classes are the most important groups in the society okay uh, you know like groups social groups can be many for example family is a social group religion is a social group and these groups uh, these groups interact with each other in a social setting but marx believed that in a society classes are the most important groups and marx identified two classes capitalist class and the working class marx believed that these two classes were antagonistic to each other because their interests were different they they always opposed each other classes are antagonistic to each other as each class has opposing interests for example in capitalist society the interest of the capitalist class is to pay workers as little as possible to exploit them in order to make profit so worker may uh, capitalist class makes profit by exploiting the workers okay so their interest can never be the same whereas the interest of the working class is to raise wages and eventually to abolish capitalism entirely of course working class does not owns the factors of production so they do not participate in the profits of the production process so the only their only interest is to demand uh, raise raise in the wages and of course if wages capitalist class would not raise wages because they want their profit so ultimately uh, when class consciousness will arise among the laborers they will overthrow and abolish capitalism class struggle classes are always in conflict with each other as they struggle to be the most powerful in society human history is driven by conflicts between classes okay for marx history is all about conflict between the classes and that is how history moves forward through history some classes win power and some lose power okay so dominant classes marx identified between two sort of classes dominant classes and subordinate classes marx believed in this binary bifurcation of the society for example dominant classes are the rulers and leaders uh, and uh, subordinate classes are, are those who are ruled and those who are followers a dominant classes in dominant classes the rulers and the leaders hold political economic and cultural power whereas the subordinate classes are powerless okay so rulers uh, control the dominant ideas they produce the ideology okay for example marx talked talk that religious beliefs are are set in motion by the capitalist class they want the labor class to believe that religion is more about for fate and their pathetic state of affairs is because of their fatalism their fate uh, and cult and this this subordinate classes are controlled by the dom dominant ideas that is false consciousness so political the dominant classes control the government and that subordinate classes are are repressed by the government and state and lastly economics so the dominant classes control production they are the controllers of economy and they are the exploiters of labor whereas the subordinate classes carry out the production and they are only the workers in the economy they don't own the factors of production on which they work and they are the exploited uh moving on with with marx's ideas uh, the next we have is the structure of a mode of production that is very uh, that is very important and if you understand this diagram you will understand the marxist theory to the core so remember marx believes that economic base is the determinant and economic base consists of 
two parts first is forces of production and the second is relations of production so this economic base it shapes the social superstructure and what constitutes superstructure it const superstructure is composed of ideas and different social institutions like education family religion politics media okay so marx believes that economic base shapes how social superstructure is organized and social superstructure in turn legitimizes the economic base so superstructure by superstructure we mean ways of thinking values ideas and social institutions marx believes that since the capitalist class owns the forces of production they determine what values would be attached to super, super, social superstructure they control politics they control mass media they control religious beliefs they control family patterns they control education so once they control these they legitimize they 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 control the state and they legitimize their property rights for example they they come up with ideas like legislation on property rights so that the rich are protected their property is protected from the poor they they make legislation in their favor so once these uh, uh, so social institutions arise and those who own the factors of production they they make these social institutions so they legitimize their position modes of production remember we talked that uh, forces of production and relations of production combine to form of mode of production the most important of marx's ideas you know as we discussed earlier that later on in his in his career marx wrote more about economics marx identifies production as essential for human existence production is uh, is the making of things and making things is actually transforming nature through labor and transforming nature means using mean you may you means using tools and labor to transform raw materials into usable goods for example foods clothes shelter uh, this is karl marx's quote men must be in a position to live in order to be able to make history but life involves before everything else eating and drinking a habitation clothing and many other things the first historical act is thus the production of the means to satisfy these needs the production of material life itself so marx believes that in order to create history first humans need to survive and in order to survive they need these material things to satisfy their needs and lastly consumption of those goods uh, which which humans transform and uh, to stay alive production is a social activity according to marx and humans cannot produce much as isolated individuals even though the capitalist system believes that division of labor results in more production but marx believes that if people work together and not in isolation they can produce more he believed that uh, people must work cooperatively with each, with each other that is they should engage in social activity so that they can produce more in a division of labor different people have different jobs and production has to be organized or managed different forms of organization that is modes of production equals to different types of societies marx believes that over the over the over the history different societies actually organized forms of production that is modes of production in different ways and a particular organization about the the this production uh, gives rise to a different type of society so in a class based society the ruling class owns the means of production that is the tools raw materials and finished goods the ruling class therefore controls production and they are then the they are the class of the owner so ruling class actually owns the factors of production that is means of production the boss the subordinate classes do the actual work but they do not own anything so they are the non owners they are the workers so the relations of production consists of owners and non owners that is those who owns the factors of production and those who do not the ruling class reaps the benefits the subordinate classes are exploited uh, marx in his in his book preface to a critique of political economy wrote that in the social production of their life men enter into definite relations that are indispensable and independent of their will relations of production which come which correspond to a definite stage of development of their material productive forces the sum of these relations of production constitutes the economic structure of the society the real foundation on which rises a legal and political superstructure 
and to which correspond definite forms of social consciousness the mode of production of material life conditions the social political and intellectual life process in general when we will talk about modes of production in the next few slides you will understand this otherwise you can just stop the video and write it somewhere so that you can come back to it later the once again the economic base I remember has two parts the forces of production and relations of production forces of production constitute of the scientific knowledge technological know how tools raw materials and labor force whereas relations of production constitute the social relations which control and organize production it constitutes the class of owners who controls the class of non owners the social superstructure uh, the it constitutes of ways of thinking values and ideas and it forms social consciousness it constitutes ideologies and the second aspect of social superstructure is social institutions the first is ways of thinking values and ideas the second is social institutions which are religion family education media and state and government the economic ba base shapes the social superstructure the economic base is controlled uh, is is controlled by the ruling class so the superstructure is also controlled by the ruling class so if of course economic base is controlled by the ruling class and the economic base shapes the social superstructure then it means that uh, it means that by extension the ruling class also controls the superstructure this means that dominant ideologies reflect ruling class interests okay because they are the ones who are behind this they control the superstructure they define what ideas are right and what what ideas are wrong and dominant ideologies justify the power of the ruling class because they serve their interests so therefore they justify their 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 expropriation social institutions work in ruling classes interests as i said that like state politics media they all work to reinforce the position of the ruling class social institutions serve the ruling class interests for example family it instills dominant ideologies in the young and it breeds and reproduces the worker family is a social institution and how it helps the ruling class well it first of all it reproduces the labor force and secondly and they in, it instills in the minds of the young that they are poor because uh, because they are destined to be poor they don't they are not poor because of the oppression because of the expropriation of their rights how education uh, basically serves the ruling class well it instills dominant ideologies in the young media spreads the dominant ideologies through society and government controls non owners workers and protects the owners interests for example private property media government ensures social stability and maintains ruling class power that is repressive so once again this is the recap of the structure of a mode of production we have an economic base which constitutes forces of production and relations of production and then we have a superstructure which constitutes the ways of thinking and secondly social institutions so types of modes of production so based on this 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 uh, analysis by marx marx says that in history there have been five modes of production what were these number one was primitive communism in primitive society there were no classes and very low division of labor and all worked together for common good after primitive communism there was a concept of ancient slave mode of production it was practiced in ancient greece and rome and the concept the concept was of aristocracy and the slaves were slaves did most of the work after this came the feudal mode of production or feudalism and the the example of this is in the medieval europe where feudal landlords and peasants worked and peasants did all the work so the relations of production were that of landlords and peasants and then came the capitalist mode of production where the relations of production were between the capitalists and the workers uh, bourgeoisie on the means of production and the proletariat owned only their labor force and after that marx predicted that after capitalist mode of production socialist or communist mode of production would come into being and in that mode of production there won't be any classes just like the initial mode of production that is primitive communism so talking about the feudal mode of production <coughs> uh let's pause this video um, because the session is is becoming a bit longer we will talk about different modes of production uh, in the next videos then we will talk about uh, the critique on marx then we talk about the labor theory of value of marx uh, of course this, this series might consist of two more lectures 
but stay tuned for more video more more lectures of marks and after after this series you will be in a good position to explain marks and understand marks thanks for watching and don't forget to watch the next lecture